Welcome. Today, actually, this is quite funny because we're going to do a mi- mixed interview. Today we're joined it's by genius. two winemakers yes. here at Barra. Okay. Alessandro Viola yeah. from... Uh, Sicily. Alcamo is the west part of Sicily, uh, close to Trapani. My name is Anas. <coughs> I'm originally from Denmark. and has a background of, as a sommelier and restaurateur and importer in Copenhagen. But... Uh, Almost six years ago, I changed to make wines in the Ardèche, in the southern part of the Ardèche region, in the Rhone Valley. So, as in Sicily, a quite a warm region for for winemaking, and, mm. uh, but a really nice uh, region. <laughs> Super. Well, we're happy to have you both. Yeah. And we're going to start happy. today with Alessandro's with uh, Notte di Bianco. Notte di Bianco Notte from di, Alessandro. Notte di Bianco Viola. is uh, made from uh, Grillo by the grapes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's a typical uh, grapes of the west part of Sicily. Uh, I don't put the name of the grapes in the label because uh, for the appellation uh, you have to make a conventional wine if you want to, <laughs> to write uh, Grillo because uh, you can just write the name of the variety if you do a Sicily DOC. Okay. okay. Otherwise, uh, it's, a bo- it's, a, um, it's not permitted to put uh, the name of the grapes inside. It's okay. a, a crazy law for me, but uh, it's okay. Yeah. But my, my customer, no, my client, know that, that I make the one with the grill. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They can Google it. Yeah, it's this all right. kind of wine you, you don't choose in a supermarket. Uh, just uh, The positive thing of that is that maybe for the people that do shop in supermarkets that know Grillo to be a particular style or to tick a certain yeah. box, if they saw Grillo on this, they might be a bit surprised Assume, as well because it's yeah. quite a different style to what they might be used to. So it's also in your benefit to maybe not put the grape on the on the variety, or, yes. or like the grape on the label as well. Yes, well, yes of course. I, I make the wine uh, in, uh, we can see, natural style. Uh, I don't put anything, I don't filter, and uh, I just put a 20 milligram of sulfite when I put in bottle, mm. and stop, nothing. And then I work hard on the vines to obtain the very good grapes. The characteristic of the wine, for me, enough uh, equilibrated because uh, Sicily is a, a warm region uh, to make mm. wine, but if you use uh, your own grapes, the autochthon grapes, uh, uh, they have a balance. Uh, if you make the wine with international grapes, uh, maybe you can have uh, too much structure, but without freshness, uh, of, mm. uh, the aromas um, is not so elegant like uh, in other places. The grape varieties that you're working obviously we know Grillo and, mm. and Red, red varietals or other white varietals as well? Inside? No, no, no just in, uh, in, in general. Your no, whole in ge- production. In general, uh, I, I have uh, Nero Davolo, uh, a little bit of Syrah, Catarratto, and uh, Nerello Mascalese. Okay. Nice. Syrah is not hot, hot on, but uh, mm. in Sicily, there are good conditions for Syrah. There are many. Uh, what do you think of this? Quinn? I find the smell really interesting. Mm. I've been trying to. It kind of reminds me of. It makes it sound weird. Tree sap. Yeah, no, like I pine tree that, sap. Yeah. Because it's sweet, but there's something really green. But there is a sappiness, but it reminds me of like darker honey as well. Yeah, also honey. Yeah. There's just something tree-like about it. I don't know. Do you remember, I'm a tattooer, so sometimes the stuff that comes out of my mouth <laughs> right, is well, going to well, be a little... When you drink it, in the off, noise, you don't feel it. that you have a, this uh, strong freshness and saltiness uh, because these, um, the noise is uh, warm. Mm. And then when you, you drink it, that the finish is very fresh and salty. Mm-hmm. Oh, I love the smell. And I think this would also be something I would definitely eat, eat with. This would be great with certain mm. foods. What would you pair it with? What do you like to eat with this? What do you like? To eat with this. If you were to drink it with food. Nothing, just a drink. Just a drink. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's all good dinner. wine. Don't worry about yeah. it. Just drink. That well, is the dinner. For me, the best food for this kind of wine is uh, something very, very salty. Mm-hmm. Baccala la pantesca. Okay. Baccala in capelli. You know, no. <laughs> the, with the, the, capers, ah, capers, capers and, capers. and salted oh, yeah. fish. Yeah. 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 Very, yeah, 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 very salty. Oh, sardines, sardines, sardines. sardines. Yeah. sardines. Yeah. 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 Uh, just on the the point of Grillo, like with the supermarket wine thing, that there, I think in in Sicily you do see a lot of young Grillo that's made yeah. in a particular way. Yeah. And it's quite sterile and sort of formulaic. It can almost be like a Pinot Grigio sort of yeah. style. 
Um, and it wasn't until I went to Masala and I visited yeah. Marco de Bartoli yeah. about four years ago that I, I had a new appreciation for Grillo, uh, mm. like trying sparkling wines, steel wines, obviously the sort of sweet and, mm-hmm. and sometimes fortified wines. I really appreciated that grape variety for its ageability, for its complexity when it's made really well. Uh, and I think that's not necessarily talked enough about with this grape variety. But it's, it's but actually special, quite an interesting grape. Especially for white wine, if you work in a conventional way, a natural way, the expression of the wine is totally different, so it's uh, the same also for other grape variety. Uh, because in a conventional way, if you work with up oxygen, uh, with the technology, you have uh, the strong aromas uh, of uh, tropical fruit, for example, mm. like Sauvignon. Uh, mm. Almost uh, every variety grape, the body is different, it's more thin. It's, it's true for the grill, but it's true for uh, all kinds of the grapes. If you work in a natural way, our uh, the expression are totally different. Uh, especially in the white wine is more. The red mm-hmm. wine too, but mm. uh, white wine is uh, another kind of wine compared okay. to conventional wine. I would agree with you. I mm. think we all agree. <laughs> yeah. Also, you, they use uh, in conventional wine, they used to put uh, more sulfite, for example, in the white wine. Because right. you don't have the tannins to protect the wine, right. so they need more uh, sulfite. Uh, and so are very different, very, very different uh, equilibrium. So when did you start making wine then? Since you were uh, just, you sort of grew up with it? Yeah. 2010, my wine. Your own label? Yeah. Yes. Before, I worked for some seller. Yeah. And before, I make uh, the wine in my garage uh, by myself. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Without the knowledge. I love it. <laughs> then I, uh, I go to the university, study a wine making, mm-hmm. a technologist. Mm-hmm. I start to work to big seller, conventional seller. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I told that so the, the wine I make uh, in my garage before was better. <laughs> <laughs> and then I left the job and started making the wine uh, in my garage yeah. again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, now I make uh, 45,000 bottles. Okay. I start to be 1,000. Slowly yeah. built it up over the years. Yeah. Would you say that your style of winemaking or the way that you approach the grapes that you work with has changed at all since you started in 2010? Or would you say you sort of stuck to the I way d- things I, began? No, I, I died to start to make the wine uh, like that. In the white wine, I changed something in the process, but mm. the philosophy was uh, a very nat- natural wine. Mm. Uh, but, um, for example, you don't study in the book how to make a natural wine. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> they don't care. We write the book, don't care uh, how to do a very good wine without putting nothing inside. But so, do you think that working with conventional wines sort of taught you the up or what you didn't want? In the book, you... you there's an actual book. <laughs> in, in the... <laughs> <laughs> in the knowledge book, you, 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 you study what's happen uh, if you do everything in the wine. If you put uh, this, this, what's, then you choose how to make the wine. And okay. the book is not written, you have to do the wine this way. Uh, but uh, they don't care about uh, how to make the wine without putting uh, nothing inside. Okay. In white wine, you have to filter, you have to clarify. Uh, this is the normal process. So it's like cooking with a recipe versus cooking with what's available from right, the market and that intuition day. and it's like cooking a bag of bread or making a bread with sourdough. Right. Basically, mm. you can buy grapes and you can buy all the products you need to make a wine. And buy your own starter. And you can, uh, or you can make, it. make the wine easily, and it will be the same wine every year. Right. Mm. Or you can make a sourdough bread with the local wheat. And your own, your own starter, that and it will be a different bread uh, you make in the morning and you make in the afternoon. It will never be the same. And it's the same with natural wine. You you need to adapt the grapes and the environment you are working in. I agree. It's uh, the wines of the natural wines are made. Uh, you say 50 or 90 percent in the vineyard, mm-hmm. and the rest is in the cellar. But it's really a small transformation. You know, you you need to have your your primary products as the highest possible quality. Otherwise, you will never be able to make anything. Otherwise, everything you make with it is going to end up being yeah, super Yeah, because when you're into the cellar, yeah. the, the quality of the grapes become only less. Less, less and less good. You know, if you're yeah. good, you keep the same level. Oh, yeah. But you can never go up. You know, winemaking is not about making things better. It's about processing grapes into being wine. And it's, for me, it's really not about making wines. It's more about following this process, you know. 
And if you if you think you can make something better, you you have a full impression of what you're capable of right. doing. Because winemaking is not winemaking. It's, it's if it's something is wine growing or is wine following. It's but you can also make wine. But then you sure. then you actually blend things that is not supposed to be. Right. If you mm. if you talk natural wine, in my opinion. But well, even there is a company. Have you seen that? I don't know uh-oh. if I sent it to you. Called Endless West. And they're looking, they're working on producing... It already um, sounds like a cryogenic company. <laughs> sounds, it does, like, sounds awful. Like cryogenics. Yeah, and it's, um, they're producing, they want to produce whiskey without grain and wine without grapes. What? They're doing it in like, yeah, in the US. Oh, it's, no. it's absolutely insane. That's I mean, <laughs> whether it's going to taste yeah. good or not. No, the problem it's is, is that really if criminal. you want to make a lot of wine uh, every year the same, Without a risk, in conventional wine, they study how to do it. Uh, mm. But for me, if you drink a very good natural wine and uh, a very good conventional wine, the conventional wine seem uh, the imitation of okay. the natural wine. But it's too difficult to do every year in big quantity. Mm. So in this case, they uh, they use something to do. But for me, is a uh, is a, a false, very similar mm. if you do very well. But it's not the region. For me, the, com- the great conventional wine, the inspiration is a great natural sure. wine. But it's impossible to do in big quantity and every year. Mm. So they, they find a road to do it uh, very good. For the consumer, don't know right. the original, they don't understand. Mm-hmm. But when you, don't, you know uh, the quality of a natural wine and then you drink a conventional wine, you don't know why, if you, you if you are not experts, but your body says there is something strange in right. this wine. There is some rumors uh, that maybe don't don't have to be there. <laughs> 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 yeah, it's not perfect linked to the uh, grapes, uh, and, and this uh, don't happen in the uh, wine. But uh, in the, the opposite, for me. Conventional wine, good conventional wine are also for me an inspiration because they are very clean, very perfect. Mm-hmm. And for me, with the experience in the future, you can do a natural wine also a very, very clean straight, wine. Sure. perfect. Yeah. This is my my objective. Right. And in this moment, is a, a, is a young the process of, of, of natural wine, mm-hmm. and so. If you have some little mistake, it's okay. Yeah. Be, because uh, better uh, some, something true than uh, right. something wrong. Better and have the that, honesty than the, uh, <laughs> the imitation of the truth. Right. I prefer uh, the consumer in this moment to maybe say that. I prefer to, to drink uh, vinagre yeah. <laughs> and don't uh, your false wine. Yeah. Uh, but in the future, I think that uh, we. We will improve everybody in the, in the process to make uh, with mm. the experience. Uh, I think we were also saying, in terms of a flavour point of view, we, was, we we talked about this before, didn't we? And we said that what we love about these styles of wines right. is that it's not just only fruit when you first yeah, try it. Like, There's mm. the, sometimes there are off notes, but sometimes yeah. those off notes make the yeah. really pleasant notes more pleasant, um, and it makes it a little bit more interesting from a just from a curiosity right. tasting point of view and an enjoyment yeah. point of view. And I do think me. that generally consumers that gravitate towards natural wine are already the type of people that want A, to try new things, that are excited about things not always being the same. And open. And open-minded to things maybe not mm-hmm. always being as is. So, yeah, I think it would be nice to teach regular consumers that instead of having the same, same old every day that you know... Don't reach for the bottle that you know exactly what it tastes like, but maybe try something that, that could be exciting that you find, you know, takes you to a different place. Yeah. Like a conversation with a person you didn't know before. Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like, take the chance rather mm-hmm. than to always stick to the thing that you know, because mm-hmm. you might be surprised. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The problem is that uh, we use to drink uh, conventional wine, first time try natural wine, and they feel something strange. Yeah, totally. Uh, and yeah. Uh, your, your body is in our. What is this? <laughs> I never drink something like this, but I, I'm sure I can drink. <laughs> and tomorrow I, I, I'm not sick. <laughs> and people generally feel uncomfortable when things are different, yeah. too, you know? But it's like embrace that feeling of not knowing. People, yeah. especially hardcore conventional wine drinkers, I think sometimes they just don't know how to feel about something that's a little different or tastes out a bit wild. Zone. Yeah, they're totally out of their comfort zone because they don't have the language maybe to describe it or they don't, 
you know, maybe they see something that they would think is a fault in something else, but really it's a, an expression of something interesting in that wine, and suddenly they feel out of place. But yeah, I mean, that, that's why I like natural wine. I'm sure that's... Yeah, I'm on board with that. Yeah. Should we try the next that's one? That's what I was about to say. Yeah. Um, <laughs> We've got empty yeah, glasses on the table. We're going friends now. Oh, we're going to go back and forth. <laughs> Thank you. I love the colour of this. So, Anders, what wine are you pouring for us? Uh, this is a wine from 2017. Mm-hmm. And the wine that... Uh, uh, you need to, I need to explain the vintage of 2017. So what's the name of the wine for our <laughs> listeners? Sedman. Légèrement serré, malaisé comme publix. Okay, means, that's a, uh, no. <laughs> it's a very long name for, for wine, probably, but uh, it means this hand that was slightly squeezed too much uh, <laughs> left me with a you know feeling of a, you know complexity or you know leave, left me you know. Uh, it's kind of a great segue from what we were just talking about, yeah, actually, in it terms is. of sentiment. You know these guys, uh, between, between men, there's always these guy that's squeezing your hand too much. God, oh. we met one of those oh at the pop-up. Oh my gosh, that guy He was crushing pop-up. hands. Yeah, it was really, both I hated it. him instantly. But both there's, of two us versions, that. there's two oh. versions of it, because there's this guy doing this, and you, you think when, you, when he's squeezing your hand, you think, what is he trying? Is this, is it, is it, are we starting a battle now, yeah. or what, what we, what's going on? But there's also these women that, when you try to say hello to them, they never, you know, no, the opposite. They they keep squeezing your hand until oh. you drag Pull it away. up, oh. and and it leaves always, you know, this uh, feeling of insecurity. Sure. Uh, and for me, um, the 2015 vintage was very very warm, and it really left me with this impression of being squeezed a little too much. <laughs> And when I experienced 2017 being not as warm as 2015, but similar in the in the heat and the the dryness in the summer, no, we had not too much water. I was afraid that I would experience the same thing. Okay. So I kept up my. I started to make wines with a memory of 2015. This squeezed hand that that left me a little out of my comfort zone. Uh, so it's it's, a, it's actually the last red wine I made in in the 2017, and it's a blend of Carignan and Mew, uh, Carignan and Chardonnay. Sorry. Carignan and Chardonnay. So it's yeah. uh, it's we always when we do red wine we destem the red grapes mm-hmm. by hand. Uh, so it's a small portion of grapes of Carignan mm-hmm. and uh, a quite big portion of the juice of Carignan and then the juice of Chardonnay. Mm-hmm. And it's a way to. Carignan is a grape that has a very thick uh, skin, mm. uh, and if you if you, you want to, color, yeah. it gives mm. easily a lot of color and a yeah. very rich uh, wine. Big sun this so, so if you want to do that, it's easy. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want to make a more light red wine, as I enjoy yeah. making yeah. them, but at the same time, you need you you like to find the structure of the yeah, wine. Yeah. It's difficult. So, in this way, I put few grapes and a lot of juice, and it gives me the possibility to make a long maceration. Okay. Without having a rich, tannic, uh, you know, overpowering wine. Because this is very smashable. And with the, this, this would, yeah, this would be a perfect smashable red. Yeah, totally. And uh, <laughs> a category of wine that we, we categorise wine about how drinkable it is, and the ones that are most drinkable are called smashable. But um, with the Chardonnay grapes, are you... Are they, is that a co-ferment then? Are you, yeah, yeah. So you're fermenting them on the skins of the Carignan with no, the Carignan? No, it's only the juice of the Carignan. Uh, it's only the juice of uh, Chardonnay. Okay. But w- with the and skins of the Carignan, exactly. yeah. so okay. that's just sort gotcha. of added in, yeah. co-fermented. I always blend yeah. uh, in the harvest. Okay. You know? okay. I, when I make wines, I really um, s- I imagine that I'm cooking, actually. I have a background of a, I'm educated as a chef long before I was sommelier and all these things. And still, when I make wines, I, I feel like I'm cooking. Mm. So, I we taste the grapes in the vineyards, mm-hmm. and we harvest. And you, sometimes you feel uh, you like some acidity from the grapes, and you you want to follow this direction, or you taste some other grapes, and they have another bitterness and saltiness, maybe. And by mixing these things, I construct the wines. Bring the elements together. together. Into the exactly, wine. Mm. and that's all in the mm. harvest after. When we do the press pressing yeah. of the grapes, then it's finished. We never touch afterwards. Okay. Uh, we never blend. We never do anything uh, filtration or sulfur or anything. I really want after the the pressoir mm-hmm. uh, to leave the wines to make their own story. Therefore, we have short window. Sometimes a few days 
mm. for some wines sometimes we do maceration for one or two or three weeks at this point not more than that but it means that we have only these few days or weeks to make the wine or to blend the grapes if mm -hmm. you want and then afterwards the wine has to make themselves yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're like it's your turn now <laughs> yeah but it's I, I like them too but I think you see that in the wine there's a purity in the wine here and um, there's a brightness and right. I, I think that's really nice that you it's a yeah. really drinkable wine yeah totally really very much like this wine me too I would definitely drink heaps of this what's your food pairing Gwen because that's usually your question so I'm actually, putting you on the I spot I actually now. think that <laughs> I actually think that I would probably be happy to drink this with without this food of, with, <laughs> but no I was going to say yes but also with the sort of because I date an Austrian chef with the mm. typical Austrian like Yorza where they have just bread and some charcuterie mm. I think I happily do that just some snacks what's it called Yorza I can never pronounce it properly I don't, I've it's never also like it. dialecty yeah. yeah Yorza Yorza <laughs> I always think if you're saying anything in Austrian, just to like, whoa. Her <laughs> <laughs> boyfriend does sound like Arnold Schwarzenegger like as well. Like 100%. It's ridiculous. I live with Arnie. Yeah. Authentic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I think that's... But what would you then... I don't know. I, I like in wines, uh, it's hard when it's your own wine. Or yeah, wine totally. Because you feel many things when you taste your own wines. Yeah. And you, you, you know the flavors so well because... Uh, before bottling, I taste the wines every day, mm. uh, especially up during the days up to where we, or the month, or mm. the weeks up to when we bottle. I, I really, I taste a lot. So the same wines over and over and over again. Uh, but when I make the wines, I always search for s specific things. Uh, uh, I like very much acidity and saltiness in wine, uh, and therefore uh, it's flavors that I, I, I like to find when right. I taste them as well. Uh, in the south, we uh, we can easily make quite strong, right. quite uh, fruity wines. Mm. So if you want to do that, it's easy. But to to search for the other flavors is more again. When I feel these flavors are there, I, I like to put them even more in place. Yeah. So so the same way, you know, I would go I would go a direction of uh, um, olives and salty fish, uh, the salty plums, uh, umeboshi, yeah. these yeah. these kind of food mm. that are in the same way very floral and. Fruit, uh, but also salty. Yeah. Right. Mm. Maybe also that kind of meat. Yeah. Very strong red. I don't like uh, uh, white. Uh, it's difficult. The, you have to find the right. Uh, this one. Mm, I think tartar actually. I feel you yeah. on that. Yeah. Because yeah. I think that sort of acidity that you get from tartar yeah. also would yeah. be yeah. like perfect. The, the meat to not cook is a little bit sweet. Yeah. You need this acidity to. Pairing, you were saying that you well, had one at Mikmik. Chicken liver chair. parfait from chicory with blood orange. Oh, I saw you post a picture. So, it's amazing. Amazing. I'm not joking. You cannot. The way he's done it is so fresh, the chef, because the, the chicory and the blood orange just make it so easy to eat. So you literally just pick up the chicory, you put on the blood orange, and you just. It's gone. It's gone in two minutes. And you just. I'll have another. I'll have another one. <laughs> and something like this would be great, yeah. because it's very much like with the chicory yeah. and the blood orange, that sort of stuff. But sweet I think that all sour. kind of falls into the category mm. of like the sort of meat meats and snicks. No Chinese food pairing from you today? No. <laughs> no, sweet, no sweet and sour pork today. <laughs> <laughs> We're just laughing back at yeah. some, some of the other... I think, sometimes because yeah. I live with a chef, I think about food a lot and what we would pair things with. And it's one mm -hmm. of the things that we love to do at home is yeah. if he's cooking at home for, for guests is I love to... Mix, it's a great place to match. be invited to dinner because he'll be like, what do you want to eat? And then he'll be like, do you want to eat this? Do you want to eat that? This is days before. There's a build-up via text and then he's calling you and sending you pictures of the ingredients that he's going to cook. So and because sometimes it's really taste. like everywhere because he worked as a... He cooked Japanese oh, yeah. food for years and he also does traditional Austrian. So sometimes you can come to dinner and it'll be a mishmash of all kinds of things. So actually for mm. wine pairing it gets... It and he loves wine. wine, so we always have yeah. lots of bottles we definitely on the table. We're really spoiled. It's the best <laughs> restaurant in town is the house. <laughs> Except Barra, of course, where we are today. <laughs> That's very delicious and yeah. very, very drinkable. Totally. Thank you. Yeah. And for people who are, for our listeners that are in Berlin, is Holger stocking all, so far the two wines that we've tried? Yeah, I think everything is Everything so we're sweet. trying is all at Vinicol to yeah. yeah. today. Yeah, it is. Okay, great. Where do we go from here? We're gonna go back. Shall we go back? We're we gonna jump back. And no, it's forth? up to you guys. You know, you guys never. Okay, we you continue. Know. Okay. We tasted a little bit before we came. 
we have to be honest. <laughs> That's why the bottles are half empty. We yeah. guess. <laughs> We're no detectives, but... Yeah. We, we, put, we put two and two mm, together you see and we've got four. Yeah. And half, half, uh, yeah. half empty, so. <laughs> it's yeah. a good sign. This one is... Uh, What's the name of this wine? In the vintage? Pure Magique, pas de chimique. <laughs> That's a bit easier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's translatable. It's, Pure uh, Magic with no chemicals? Yeah. It's, uh, it means... Because it's a blend similar to what you see in the northern part of our region, where they okay. used to, where they make uh, Côte Côte and uh, Amitage and all these things. So this is Syrah and Viognier? Or? Yes, exactly. Okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's, I work very closely to a winemaker called Chiral Dustric, and when we work, he likes to say all the time, it's magic, it's magic, it's magic, it's magic, okay. <laughs> because he's a very, he's a man that uh, has very easy to find joy, and he, he he finds pleasure in many things, and and when even the small things, he finds very magical. Uh, cool, sounds like a great guy. He's, he's a great guy, <laughs> and he's a great winemaker as well, by the way. But uh, it's another thing. But uh, so I find it funny to say this is just ma- magic. It's magic. This is just magic. There's no chemicals, like the same things you find uh, 50 kilometers from where we are. Yeah. So it's the same idea as the wine we tasted before. It's uh, it's a blend of a white and a red and the de-stemmed uh, red with the juice of the reds but also uh, the juice of union yep. and uh, it's the same idea i taste the grapes uh, the syrah of 2017 was really spicy uh, syrah can be like grinded pepper mm-hmm. and really in, almost impossible to to even in the in can the, be tough yeah really tough even in the raw f- format as a grape it mm. really can be really intense and on the other hand we had Junier that was maybe having a little lack of the structure because the white grapes when it gets too warm in our place they lose uh, acidity very fast yeah uh, then you get that blousy quite flabby yeah, yeah. over fruity over floral mm. things uh, for me Junier can be almost like a lychee uh, jasmine flower thing mm. jasmine and it can be nice but it can also be without any direction we talked about this. We talked about the onion. And Gwen yeah. was saying that you said that you struggle sometimes because you mm. never know what you're going to get and you're constantly yeah. discovering things. I feel like the onion is sometimes really salty for me. So it's a weird that sometimes it can be really fruity and then sometimes it can be really saline. So I'm always a little, yeah, lost. But with is the a grape like that? It's I find it interesting. Well, but it's, gr- it's a grape for me similar to Cabernet Sauvignon or Kivustamina and Alsace. Oh, speaking my language. Just <laughs> That's her favourite grape. No, but I like it. I, 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 started, I started to like it because as a sommelier, I didn't like it at all. Because it, That's it why was, she hates it, I think. It's so overpowering. Full fed, full fed. Yeah, but it's so rich and it takes so much space when you... Yeah. But I love natural Gewürztraminers because I think they can be really interesting. Yeah, but I agree. But it's, there's, there's too few making this. Yeah, kind I think of it's of super special. That's why you're about tomorrow. I know. <laughs> well, there's a couple of good guys in uh, Alsace that makes beautiful. Yeah, she likes yeah, Julian Meyer, and listener was the other one you yeah. discovered recently. Bruno oh, Schulam makes a, and also uh, oh, uh, yeah. uh, Stefan Banbat. He makes a macerated uh, Gewürztraminer. Because I love these Alsace. macerated ones. They're almost like cocktails. You know, they have this sort of really, Negroni. Really or yeah, it gets a bitterness yeah. similar. And I love anything with a bit. We've also discussed this. I like anything with a bitter end note because it just yeah. makes it more. If you want to have more and more of it. I mean, maybe you're Italian. They like bitterness. Yeah, I love when I went to Naples. Yeah, Campari. That's, and that's my jam. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> that's my jam. I also love Italy. I go to Italy yeah. more than any Pan other place. So do I. Yeah. In, in Italian, we don't make strong coffee. We make coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There we go. The other part, they make coffee with the water. Yeah. 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 The rest of the world, they make yeah. coffee similar to tea. Our style is the cough. <laughs> Keep rolling on okay. this. <laughs> we could talk about yeah. the virtual media for another half an hour. <laughs> Watch out. But um, your labels, I think it's worth just touching yes. on them because even like when we got the delivery and I had some magnums from Alex at Tuto in London at my last event, mm. the last two events that I did and one of the guys was like, the labels come off this, this wine <laughs> because it does look a bit like a back label. It is actually a um, back label. Yes. No, so the story short is that the first vintage I made, I wanted to find an artist that I like to work with. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I didn't succeed in finding the right person in the beginning. So we decided just to put on the back label. Uh, write the name and put all the info, the legal stuff that needs to be there. Yeah. And then I thought one day I find the 
asks that know. I like and I put on the label. <laughs> but then uh, the wine started to taste good and my bank manager he's called me and said we need some money to go into your account otherwise this uh, <laughs> project it will never succeed. Mm. So we started selling wines with the label and uh, uh, I liked it. Yeah, it's kind of cool. Uh, also, we were searching for something uh, that was uh, neutral in some way. I like, I like mm. the. I never give the wines the same name uh, two times. I, I change mm. the name all the time. I change the blend of the grapes and the vinification every year. And sometimes the names are quite political as well. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes they're quite political. Sometimes and some they're, they're funny. Yeah. And they reference music and yeah. different things. Yeah. And I like it like that. I like yeah. to. It's, it's it's also for me the wines are, are a picture of we that make them in a certain period of life and I and the names are the same it's it's actually what I think or we feel or think inside and we put we write it and we put it as a message mm. uh, so I like to be able to have this vo uh, volatility I don't know this easiness in changing the right. things flexibility all, exactly yep. all right. the time and also I, I like to have a label that fits into a wine bar or a nightclub right and also a label that fits in in a three-star restaurant. Right. So I don't want any naked women or uh, uh, stupid things written on my labels because yeah. I think if I do that, uh, I take my wines away from a place where they could be. Mm. Or I, I pre-dictate an impression of the wines that not necessarily is what is what the wine wants. You kind of just want to let the wine speak for itself want, rather than... Yeah, that's, and that's, want, that I was my understanding of it. Like, for such a minimal label, and then you see the wines actually that... I mean this in a really positive way, actually, that wines that have sort of minimal manipulation going on with them that really um, present the character of the great variety of the vineyards sure. without this sort of very sort of hand... Look, it's, a, you know, without this very... Industrial, you know, like it's the opposite right. of industrial wine. There's zero marketing in that label, and that's sure. what I like about it. Yeah. Which is in and itself its, its own type of marketing. Yes, but yes. For, sure also, for sure it is. Yeah, but, uh, it's <laughs> but also, around it, yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah. I mean, I'm fascinated by labeling anyway because I think it's a uh, yes. Because yeah, but that's you as an artist, it's my, yeah, right. Yeah. So that's something that I'm always fascinated how the two things connect. Or mm -hmm. sometimes when you have winemakers that have very different labeling say like Christian Cheetah where you have one you know uh, bottle that looks very classic with a bottle with, and then like with a label you give a, a communication totally. so yeah. you give his communication don't put the label and you I do, give my communication right. because I, I paint in the label something sure. that I like to, to paint did you paint uh, yours yourself or, my or someone else did you? girlfriend oh. cool yeah I I tell her um, I I would like to something like that. Yep. She she paint and then uh, I check that I you're check happy. And, so you're yeah. the art artistic director Together, okay. and then uh, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that's the same. Yeah. I like that story very too, much yeah. because it's the same connection. Sometimes uh, I think what you miss in natural wine is also that the labels becomes more and more you know wild and crazy right and sometimes it's more the label selling mm. yeah. than the wine absolutely and when you say it's your girlfriend or we do it and for, it, uh, you know it's not just something artsy for, for me yeah. it's important that the label communicates something about the wine the beautiful label but don't, don't, don't link it with the wine it's annoying the, yeah but that, I, I think that's why I, I do I, like I, I don't like where you have wines with different, totally different styling yeah, many, on many, different wines. Many, many seller give a, a graphic, uh, give, uh, do a label for me. Ah, beautiful this one. But the label uh, is something that uh, you want to communicate. Uh, just you can do mm -hmm. it. The idea, for example, mm. uh, some, someone can uh, help you to, to paint it or write it, but uh, the idea uh, is important that it is uh, linked to the wine. Sure. I think it'd be a very interesting experiment, actually, to yeah. label the same wine. Yeah. To Do you know what would be interesting? If you took the labels off the bottles, right, and you gave people the bottles blind, they tasted it, and then they had to match the labels up with the wine. I wonder how many people could get that. Should, we should play this game. We should. We should. We do should. It. Let's do it. We'll do a. <laughs> Not a murder mystery. It won't, yeah, be, it, won't, yeah, it won't be a murder mystery night. It'll be good. <laughs>
It was bottle number five, <laughs> the label number sure, two. For sure in the point. bathroom. <laughs> yeah. for, sure, for sure a good point, because if you drink a wine where you like the artwork on the label, probably it tastes nice. Of course it changes somewhat. your perception. But if it's like, it's like you're drinking wine in a room or in a mm. restaurant where you don't like it, or with a couple of people that you don't like, the yeah. wine starts to take, uh, taste bad. If yeah. you drink it, like today, in a in a group of people, we, we enjoy our uh, right. the company. Sure. Uh, the wine tastes better, and and it will be the same with the label. There's some labels I really don't like what they do, yeah. and immediately <laughs> I find and properly this wine. And this way, you because you think you don't have the risk. Yeah. That's <laughs> yeah. It's <laughs> what yeah. <laughs> I've also tried many good wines. Can't like this label. Label. Yeah, scared totally. about this. Someone don't like the label. They don't like the wine. So <laughs> they don't want to risk. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> okay. I like about you though, for someone who works in, you're an artist, you're, in, yes. you're designing and you're drawing and you're very talented at what you do. Why thanks. But you're quite a risk taker with wines because sometimes you buy stuff which has quite really quite. shocking labels and you're like, I'm giving it a go. And yeah. I really respect her for that because she's like, I don't care about the labels. I just like to try new things, so I just go for it. Yeah. yeah. So we've discovered some stuff that maybe I wouldn't usually pick up, if I'm honest, yeah, I wouldn't yeah, pick totally. up on the shelf and then I'm like, God, this is great. Where did you get it Because I don't always look, I, I mean, the labels are interesting to me, but I don't think it's. Mm -hmm. I try not to be swayed by them. It's more mm -hmm. like, what is this? Where is it from? Who mm -hmm. made it? Or why is it interesting? Tell me, and then I'll buy it regardless of how hideous the label is. If anybody wants to write in on the worst and best wine labels yeah, that they've please. seen, feel Send free. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. I'm sure we'll bring it up in our. Uh... We will have 15 posts by one <laughs> <from Bordeaux>. Yeah. <laughs> there are some, yeah. There's some labels things. there. Hmm? Some, There's some yeah. labels in Bordeaux that is there. That, that's the first. pure magic, pas de chimique. 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 Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I give up on French. <laughs> Le Nom is, uh, is, lo is longer the, than the description. Yes. The second wine of yours, <laughs> I'm just going to call it pure magic. Yeah. Pure magic. <laughs> You're giving it a nickname. It's lovely. No, it's lovely. It's really Thank pure, you. bright. Um, and again, Another very easy smashable. Drink 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 drink. Drink. <laughs> is the second. Pure magic is the second. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, also smashable. Yeah. I like this freshness because it's rare in our region and I find it interesting the same you get in in Sicily, you get the same always the same freshness in, in my opinion. Yeah. You know better than I, but you mm -hmm. know some there was probably there are some producers that don't reach this freshness, yeah. but what I taste from I only drink natural wine or wine without sulfur and so on. So for me, I have a very limited uh, range of wines that I can drink. I, I want to drink, I find pleasure yeah. in drinking. But from, from Sicily, it's the same. Even in many warm regions, when it's grown well, and it's in the terroir or in the hands of a winemaker that, that know what's, where to put the pressure in the, in the vinification, you can find a very charming freshness. Mm. And that's what I'm searching for in, in our wines. It's, it's really the same. So, but definitely so, comes across. Now, now the, the problem is that uh, mm, the climatic change uh, for CCD is not uh, a, a big problem because uh, we used to cultivate the grapes to resist uh, to the warm and dryness mm -hmm. <laughs> in the summer because uh, a normal summer in, uh, in CCD stop rain in May and uh, restart in October. Okay. So, no one, one time uh, uh, rain in uh, six months, five, six months. And so we, we, we plant the, the grapes uh, also more distance, okay. uh, less plant per, per hectare. In, uh, in the region, uh, like in France, in the north uh, of Italy, where in the summer uh, rain a lot, uh, maybe you put uh, many plants, uh, in, in this case uh, you can obtain a, a good matur maturation of the grapes. So. Yeah. But if uh, they rain, uh, <laughs> then they are planted to survive uh, to, uh, to the wet. Ah, so uh, you're not crowding them, they have like yes, little uh, extra... Yes, uh, if uh, a summer like this, uh, in Germany, you know, they cut the grapes in, uh, in August. Yeah, it's crazy. It and it's hot. In Sicily, I, I cut the grapes in October. So incredible, the opposite. Yeah, right. Wow. <laughs> the opposite. It was very, very hot in the center of Europe this year. This year. And yeah. we, we, we don't know what can happen because it's very crazy, the weather, <laughs> in the last years. Uh, but the warm, uh, for the warm and dryness, we are not scared because we used to cultivate yeah. the vines the in this uh, condition. This is a really interesting smell. I really like the smell of this. It's like salad niçoise. <laughs> it is actually. Yeah. It's like, it's like tuna. Salad cream. 
Sala do Futura. Yeah, it's like totally Sala in Swazi. Never can drink two times the same wine. <laughs> also, if right. the label is the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But also, the fact you need to accept yeah. natural wine is a, is a living thing. Is totally. It? We talked about sourdough and cooking in this way, but it's the same with natural wine. You, 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 you bottle a wine and the, the top part of the cube and the bottom part of the cube or the barrel or whatever, it doesn't taste the same. We, when we bottle our barrels, we have maybe, uh, I say, two or three or four of the same wine in barrels. Mm -hmm. But we don't mix the four barrels. We bottle one, we bottle number two, we bottle number three, we bottle number four. So what you yeah. get is different. It's always a little different. And the same with the bottles, they change, you know, during the period. And, yeah. and, Where they've you know. been, what they've and been. And I think it's charming. So this wine is uh, Nero d'Avola and Syrah together. Mm -hmm. It's called Notte di Ross. Not not di, di Ross. Not di so. Ross. Okay. And this is 16. Hi. Okay, so 2006. Oh. So this is the 2016 Notte di Rosso. 70% Nero d'Avola and 30% Syrah. Syrah. He fermented with the skin uh, um, for uh, 8 days, 3 hours and 25 minutes. It's very precise. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> How many seconds? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Including a lunch break? <laughs> <laughs> Second, I don't remember, but uh, tomorrow I can, I can tell you. No, 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 no. <laughs> I can check in my, in my book. Your logs, <laughs> Captain's log. Yeah. Uh, he, he stay in stainless, 80%, 20% in a chestnut barrel. And oh, is that your dog on the label there? Hmm? Is that your dog? What's your dog's the, name? This is a picture when I make my first one in my garage. So this was uh, a photograph then? What, yeah. Your dog was trying to get in yeah, on the yeah, action? Yeah. Snoopervising, yeah, I like to call I, it. I, I, make, <laughs> I make the wine uh, in an in a open, uh, open barrique and uh, I remove the skin manually and the dog can there. Uh, and uh, somebody take me a picture or...? It's funny because it reminds me of a dish that I've had, but I don't think it would go with it, but it reminds me of something. What is also. it? It reminds me of, in Venice, there's a pasta dish with onions, caramelized onions and salted fish. Mm -hmm. It kind of reminds me of this a little bit. Doesn't sound like it's for the faint-hearted, No, it's dish. really good. It's just like the really thick... <laughs> I forget yeah. what the pasta's called, thick with um, holes in it, but it's yeah. Like the long. tubes, it's like big spaghetti, sort of, but, but the, can, it's hollowed out. Yeah, but it's quite thick. But it's mm -hmm. just caramelized onions and, mm. and either sardines or um, anchovies. Mm. It's really good. Yeah. And this kind of reminds me of it. Yeah, the, the aromas uh, in this moment is, uh, is quite particular, quite strange. Uh, oh, I like it. It's a long time that I don't drink, uh, 2016. And so for me, it's a surprise too. Um, I, I like... Oh, with, yeah. your, with your wines, for me, I always feel very savoury. Yeah, like less, less fruit, more savoury, more herbal, always. Yeah, because herbal, yeah, herbal, exactly really, there's a lot of like... Now it's turning more herbal. Uh, uh, yeah, a lot of berry, like uh, aromas. In this case, uh, there are uh, other aromas. But purple is really, I mm. really find this... Uh, I was before when you talked about food, for me in my head I had, well, a couple of years ago, many years ago actually, I did a travel in Barolo area. And there's a lot of... Uh, you tell it to Nara? Mm -hmm. Yeah, tell it to Nara, yeah. Tunata. And you cut always this parcel. parsley. Parsley? Yep. Parsley. So when you mm. eat it, the first thing you have is parsley, green parsley, very aromatic. Yeah, then, then you get the cayenne, then the tuna. And then Kainas, all these yeah. things and the meat. Yeah. And I find the same with this wine. It really has so many layers. That is a great mm. quality for wine, is when you have all these layers of mm. uh, flavors. Sandwich so it's like, fillings. It's like you're digging into something and it keeps. You yeah, keep yeah. wanting to go back to find yeah, out but something it else. It keeps here. giving you something. That's, I think it's really big quality for wine. Uh, the fantastic things of the wines is that uh, it can have uh, all kind of aromas inside. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, you don't know why, but uh, but rarely grapes. Yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> yeah, right. everything every, but every every kind of uh, of flavor too. Huh? <laughs> Love it. Yeah, yeah, it's very very complex. I would like to thank you both. For yeah. joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for your time, for sharing your wines yeah. as well. Really appreciate it. Yeah, totally. Pleasure. Um, so, for anybody that's in Berlin that is um, listening, you can find these wines at Vinicultur in Charlottenburg on Grohmannstrasse. But obviously, the wines are found. You're selling in almost every market, aren't you? I know we have an audience in the US, Canada, the UK. UK, Japan no. now. A couple, <laughs> couple of singles here and there, you know, one in Malaysia, one in the <laughs> There is Thailand. Um, it's probably tattoo. Yeah. It's probably tattooers I, that I, I know. Don't, 
I don't see I don't sell just in Angola and Kazakhstan and they're everywhere. Okay. Wow, I love it. <laughs> so sorry if you're in those two places. <laughs> um, Get out of there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much and yeah, cheers. Thank, thank you for joining us. Yeah, cheers. thank you. Thank you. <laughs>